so I'm from Kansas, and in Kansas we have tall grass native prairie, and, you know, native grasses, um, and they look like weeds, <laughs> but they are strong and sustainable and beautiful. Um, and that's really a better analogy for what we were doing. You know, we could have said, we want to change the way the Central Corridor looks. And we could have spent a lot of money and built a French garden down the middle of the road, and it would have been beautiful. Um, and it would have died as soon as we walked away. <laughs> um, but instead, we are trying to seed and water and start uh, and support the, the native grasses, the, the tall grass prairie that is sustainable and strong and has deep roots um, but isn't necessarily immediately obvious when you drive down the street you know sometimes like when people plant a, a prairie grass in their front yard they have to give them that sign that says prairie grass because otherwise their neighbor just thinks they didn't mow their lawn <laughs> so there is a certain sort of scrappy um, DIY kind of feeling to what we've created but because I think we've chosen to focus on the roots rather than, than the flowers. Um, I think that's, you know, our, our theory of change is that that's what will make it sustainable. That's what will make it strong and of the community and owned by the community in the long term. So Springboard for the Arts is an economic development agency that is uh, based both in St. Paul and then also in Fergus Falls, Minnesota, which is a small community in uh, northern Minnesota. Um, and we serve artists uh, primarily in Minnesota and the upper Midwest, but also nationally. Um, so we provide direct programs sort of regionally, and then we do a lot of sharing of models and providing consulting and other um, tools to groups in other parts of the country. Um, and our work really at its core is about creating reciprocal relationships between artists and communities so that artists are visible and valued for the contributions they make and uh, are put in a position to be able to engage and bring their skills to the benefit of their community. Irrigate is a three-year creative placemaking initiative in the city of St. Paul along the Central Corridor construction. So we are building a light rail line in both cities, actually, Minneapolis and St. Paul. Um, and it's the single biggest infrastructure investment the state has ever made. It's a billion dollar infrastructure project. Uh, and so of course the hope and the expectation is that what comes along with that infrastructure development is um, development, economic development, community development in all the neighborhoods along that line. Uh, the reality of living through three to four years of intense construction um, is pretty difficult if you're, particularly if you're a small business or if you're a neighborhood that has concerns about neighborhood identity or um, you know what, what those changes are going to look like um, for your neighborhood. Um, and so that's the kind of community challenge that we think artists are pretty adept at helping with and are, are really well suited to help with um, because artists see opportunity in challenge and beauty in chaos um, and also because they have very practical skills that can bring people and attention to a business or a neighborhood. Um, and so uh, Irrigate is a partnership between Springboard for the Arts and Twin Cities Local Initiative Support Corporation, which is a a uh, chapter of a national community development um, support organization and the city uh, of St. Paul. Um, and together we created this, this project that is about engaging and mobilizing artists during the construction um, to use their creative skills to benefit those neighborhoods and businesses. Um, and uh, uh, the project is, is open to any artist who lives or works along the Central Corridor, so we have a heavy focus on working with local artists in this project. Um, and the goal really is to build, um, we talk about it sort of as building a parallel infrastructure of relationships. So we are building this huge physical infrastructure. And while we're doing that, we want to use that period of upheaval and construction um, to build a parallel infrastructure of relationships, of networks, so that communities know that they can rely on artists for the kind of creative thinking and creative problem solving. Uh, they know how to find artists, um, and they've had the experience of working together. 
Um, it's designed to be a time limited project, so once people can ride the train, then irrigate at least in that um, form will be done. Uh, and we believe that um, that we'll be able to build those relationships strong enough during that three years that it will continue then without the intervention uh, of us or of a program. And one of the things we really identified was that there was uh, a real need and a real demand from artists at all stages of their careers and, and across all kinds of disciplines for training in um, placemaking, in community engagement, in community organizing. Um, and so that was really, when I look back to sort of the genesis of the conversation, it was really there. Um, and then as we were having that conversation, we sort of identified this huge community issue and opportunity of the construction right outside our door. So our uh, office is in a building that is right on, uh, in fact, right across from the terminal end of, of the track. <laughs> um, so we had the opportunity to witness that construction firsthand and, and really witness the pressure that it put on the small businesses in our neighborhood. And so we started looking at, at the Central Corridor as a, as a real opportunity to pilot some of this new kind of training and to give people the experience of working together. And, and even in those early conversations, I think we had originally imagined that that would maybe mean picking one neighborhood um, along the corridor, maybe our own neighborhood here in Lower Town. Um, but then as we began to have the conversation in more detail with Twin Cities Local Initiative Support Corporation, with the city, um, and with various other partners and, and potential funders and supporters, um, we really, all of a sudden, we had this opportunity to really do it in a big way um, and to really say this is about the whole corridor in St. Paul, all six neighborhoods, um, and to really think about what this work might look like at a pretty massive scale at least for us. <laughs> um, and so that's what we decided really would be the most, have the most impact, have the most effect, is if we could really, I mean, a train is about tying neighborhoods together. Um, and so to really think about this work also as a way to tie the neighborhoods together and, and see that as, as very distinct and unique um, neighborhoods, but as part of a, a larger effort. So the process works like this. We have these one-day trainings for artists that are led, that are co-led by Springboard's community engagement, community placemaking staff, um, and the actual community organizers from the six neighborhood organizations in St. Paul. We call those district councils. They're, um, they're the organizations that are charged with representing the people of a certain community. Um, so in addition to the three core partners of Springboard and LISC and the city, we also have these six district councils that are additional kind of core partners and they actually co-teach the classes with us, which has been tremendously important in terms of um, making sure that the actual needs and issues of the neighborhood are represented <laughs> in the training and then in making the connections to the neighborhood. Um, so once an artist completes that one day training, then they're eligible for $1,000 in project support. Uh, and the only real restriction is that they have to have a partner that's a business or a neighborhood organization along the corridor. Um, and they can work together in teams, um, which makes the amount of project support available a little more. Um, but in general, they're, they're small projects. And that was the idea, was to seed hundreds of small projects along the corridor, not not so much to focus on one big investment, um, but to give both artists and those non-arts collaborators a low-risk way of being able to work together, to try it out. Um, so, you know, if you're approaching, and I think for small businesses uh, and for the small neighborhood organizations, to give them an experience of working with an artist at a scale that they might reasonably be able to continue doing on their own. So. Um, Whereas if you gave a, you know, a small Vietnamese restaurant the experience of working with an artist and you paid $50,000 for that big, large project, it might be transformational for them, it might be wonderful, but that restaurant's never going to be able to afford to do that again. So we wanted to sort of have the artist design projects that gave people an on-ramp to working more with artists at a scale that they could actually reasonably afford. As far back as, as 
I would say six or seven years ago, we really made an intentional decision to start moving away from the idea of being an artist service organization and more towards the idea that we were an economic development agency. And so a big part of that was walking that walk and building partnerships and um, learning the language and some of the research that informs economic and community development and, and making friends <laughs> in that sector and finding um, a really receptive and welcoming community of peers there, uh, which for an organization that is sort of a, a strange animal or is always sort of the exception to whatever rule <laughs> we're a part of, um, was, was a really refreshing experience. Um, we have a lot more in common with community development agencies than we do with a lot of other arts organizations because we don't actually produce art. We do training programs and provide resources and we engage with a, a specific community of people which is much more similar uh, to the work of a lot of economic development and community development agencies. Um, so that was a really exciting evolution and I think it's only because we had sort of started that process quite a while ago that we were able to create something so quickly at such a large scale. Um, I think without even really realizing it, a lot of the, a lot of the pieces were there. Um, one of the things we did very early on um, was hire, we hired a community organizer onto the staff at Springboard. Um, so Jun Lee Wong is a, uh, her title is actually Artist Community Organizer, um, and she runs Irrigate and some of the other community development programs. But I think sort of infusing the whole organization um, with the ideas and, and the principles of, of community organizing was a, a big piece. The scale of it was a barrier uh, early on. Um, not so much because I felt like we couldn't do it at that scale, but that it definitely put a spotlight and a pressure and a visibility on the project in a way that was fairly new to us. Um, we were really lucky to have a, a big investment from Art Place in their inaugural round right as they were launching. Um, and so that was tremendously exciting, but it also, you know, turns up the heat a little bit, <laughs> um, which is good. We work well under pressure. Um, and then the, the pressure of this opportunity slash challenge that was literally happening in front of our eyes, the pressure to get stuff up and on the ground um, and rolling so that we could actually make some meaningful change um, was, was tremendous. And so we really... Um, there were a lot of times during the sort of early part of the project where it really felt like we all sort of had our collective foot on the gas and we were really pushing that pedal to the floor as hard as we could to get, you know, because when I say there's a leap of faith, that doesn't mean there's no planning involved. There has to be some you know, infrastructure to get what we had done in a very small pilot way the summer before, really up to the scale that we wanted it to be at. One of the things we've kind of struggled with is to figure out people are interested in the project from so many different angles. Um, you know, people are interested in the economic development and people are interested in the transit development and people are interested from a sort of neighborhood agency and equity perspective, and people are also interested internally about sort of the collaborative piece and, and, and the program design that I think from the outside seems very iterative and, and making it up as we go along. <laughs> Developmental, that's a better word than making it up as we go along. Um, so it's been, I think, a challenge for us to kind of grab on to which of those things we really want to measure. Um, but yeah, now that we have, we have this sort of early work, I think we are in particular interested in the longevity of those connections and what um, change continues to happen and if that begins to feel like momentum that really grows into something particularly, I mean for me success really looks like do people continue to work together? Does that become a part of the culture of those neighborhoods that I have a challenge? You know, I, I have a business problem or we have a challenge in our neighborhood. Let's call an artist. Um, that's sort of the dream for me is that that begins to be how people just think and that's just sort of a given. One of the benefits of creating lots and lots of small projects is that it provides lots and lots of opportunity for the media to cover those projects that 
every day, every week, there's three or four new things for all different kinds of reporters, um, bloggers, people to cover. Um, and so we've seen, you know, traffic reporters and city beat reporters and arts reporters and economic development reporters and neighborhood based reporters and the culturally specific newspapers and, you know, the college radio and public radio, the legacy newspapers. They all have all these different angles, um, and so each one of those projects appeals to a different, just like it appeals to a different set of people in the community who might come and see it, it also appeals to a different set of people who might cover it. Um, and so in the first year, we've had over 100 positive media stories about the Central Corridor, and for a community challenge like that where the narrative before was really about how difficult and how frustrating and how angry and how long and hot and dirty and maddening. <laughs> um, now there is this alternative positive narrative for the neighborhood that is about how fun and how joyful and uh, how interesting, how weird. Um, I did a little, I made a word cloud of all the headlines from those articles and it's pretty fun to see Central Corridor, construction, and happy as some of the top words that <laughs> came up in those articles. I think, you know, there's a lot of parallel to me in Springboard's relationship to the field of community development and economic development, to the way that we work with individual artists and how they build relationships with a small business owner or a neighborhood organization. Um, you know, some of those core principles around um, community engagement, around collaborative work, are about speaking someone else's language and being able to hear their needs and being able to then build something based on your relationship rather than on your agenda coming in or only responding to need, but that it really is about where do we, where do we find that Venn diagram of our interests and how do we build something from there. Um, so that's, you know, that's a strategy we talk about with artists. It's also the way we work as an organization. Um, and so we've spent quite a bit of time over the last few years building these relationships with community development agencies. Um, uh, the president of our board uh, is the deputy director at Twin Cities Local Initiative Support Corporation and he's been tremendously influential in a really wonderful way on our work um, and I hope vice versa. <laughs> um, and so uh, this year, um, after doing that work and sort of building those relationships and having um, Irrigate as, as sort of perhaps the most tangible example of this new way of working that we're interested in, um, the Metro Consortium of Community Developers here in the Twin Cities uh, invited us to join as, as a community development agency. Um, and so any time that the thing that I or we have been saying about ourselves, uh, someone from that field actually says it back, that's way better than just me saying, you know, really this is economic and community development. One of the things that we've worked really hard on at Springboard is that we have this set of seven guiding principles which really represent our core values um, and they're the things that we're willing to go to the mat for every single time and they're things that are really infused in the whole staff and the board um, and the thing that that's allowed us to do is that then it gives us a tremendous amount of freedom on a daily basis to improvise, to take advantage of opportunities, to work with new collaborators because we have a really clear sense of, of who we are. Uh, that allows us to do a lot of different things um, as long as we do them in the way that is, is who we are. Um, and in a way, particularly with the Irrigate, I would say early on, it was the thing that allowed us to do this project. I think at the beginning, even when some other people didn't know why we were doing it, we knew <laughs> very clearly the ways that it connected to our guiding principles and our core strengths. Um, and so sometimes even being able to take that leap before you've had the chance to explain to everyone about everything, about why this is happening, to just go and do it and then demonstrate, here's how it connects to our core values, our guiding principles. Um, there's a lot of freedom in that and it means that we have a lot of freedom I think throughout the staff and the board to come up with new ideas, to make new plans, to work with new people.